Before that, though, it was the Coronation Street wedding we were all desperate to see happen, but just before Daisy could make it down the aisle, horror unfolded in the Rovers. Hi, mate. Time to drink up. We've got to go. We've got a wedding to get to. <laughs> Look at you. Justin. I think everybody wants you because you're so perfect, don't you? What are you doing here? Nobody's going to want you after this. Jack! Jack! Ah! Ah! Jack! Oh, it's so horrible, isn't it? After he was caught up in that shocking acid attack, we're joined now by Coronation Street star Ryan Prescott. Welcome. Welcome. It's so lovely to have you Thanks here. Thanks very much for having me. It, it's a real departure for him as a character, isn't it? Because actually, he's he's nom normally in a much more comedy role. He's got this real comedic edge to him. And then here we are seeing him do something very, very serious. So when you saw this coming up, when they approached you, what did you think? I mean, I was excited because it's good for Ryan to kind of yeah. show him in a different light. Um, and like you said, he's, he's kind of developed into a character that's got this comic edge, which is great as an actor. Yeah, Because you get to play the reality, well, play the truth of a situation mm -hmm. and pathos and some humour coming from it. It's always fun. Um, but it's good to kind of get your teeth stuck into something of a little more substance. Sure. Oh, it was so good. I watched it and I was just like, the way they filmed it, that grainy element mm. was so, so good. But how much research actually went into this? Um, I mean, you kind of go down the rabbit hole, so to speak, and there's a lot of reading, a lot of research, but I think no matter how much research you do, um, I don't think you can ever really comprehend this level of extreme violence. It's just one of those things. Yeah, yeah. it's another um, level. Yeah, of course, unless you've been through it, you know, and apart from that, you just lean into the imagination and, and do your reading. And I met with some people from the um, Katie Piper Foundation. Yeah. Um, a gentleman called uh, Andreas Christophoros, who I think has been on the show. Yeah, a he's of times. been, he's been here, on the show. That's yeah, right. um, amazing guy. And, and sort of he hearing told me that first hand experience from someone like him must really help you, I'd have thought. I was shocked to know how many acid attacks happen in the UK. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a huge 300 number. in Manchester in 2022 alone. And they don't year, get reported, so. do they? they don't no, get they're often not televised and often not released on mainstream media, probably. Um, to keep it internal for the uh, survivors. Um, but, yeah, it's way more prevalent than I'd ever thought. The, um, the scene, uh, the sort of the aftermath of the incident when it happens, um, they're advised straight away to get water yes. on, onto the area. So I, think, I think that's one of the main things we wanted to kind of get across, as just a, a simple, uh, if it, you know, God forbid, if it ever happens mm. to anyone within society, to get a constant running stream of water um, there is a substance called difotterine, which is in any emergency care centre and, and hospital and stuff like that, which is a, an acid and alkaline neutraliser. Um, but apart from that, I mean, if you can't get your hands on anything like water, that, so water, constant running stream. That, that wasn't hot water they were putting on you, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, I was completely unprepared for the temperature <laughs> of the water. Did you underestimate yeah, it? There's no acting <laughs> happening in, in the following scene. It, it's just me trying to breathe for several hours. Oh, my filmed. God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because wow. we couldn't have uh, the steam. Um, because it of has course. to be cold water. Yeah. To sweat, yeah, so. Cold it is. Yeah. What about the okay. whole sense of when you was filming it? Was there a sense of urgency to get this story across? 100%. Yeah, uh, there was a real energy on the block, to be honest. There usually is on, on every block, but um, I think everyone had this kind of respect and this, this curious, respectful urgency mm. to kind of get the story told in the right way. Um, uh, and, and I think that really kind of contributes to performance as well, when everyone on the floor is focused on the yeah, same thing. Yeah. Getting it yeah. right. What's going to happen with him then? Because when you spoke to Andreas um, about his own experience of surviving an acid attack, one thing that came out was that he struggled with relationships and mm. sort of that interaction with people again. <clears throat> so we look at Ryan now. How is he going to change? How is he going to cope? I think it's one of those things when you go through a situation of real stress and, and massive shift in your life. Mm. Um, I mean, Ryan especially tries to reach out and kind of grasp onto everything he can in order to deny his new reality, um, mostly being his relationships, his relationship yeah. with Alian and Dazir um, and his opportunity to go back to uh, Ibiza with his new love interest called Crystal. Yeah. Um, so he kind of tries to cling on to those things. Um, and I think there's a natural tendency to push the people away 
that you love the most yeah. uh, when you're in such a vulnerable state. And I think he has a little bit of that as well. Yeah. Um, Ryan, how do you feel as an actor that you are going to have to put this prosthetic on every single time <laughs> that you're on the telly now? Because it's, it's not an easy process. How long does it take to, to put on? About an hour um, and about an hour off as well. They're getting quicker, though. I mean, Gillian Walsh, our, our head of makeup, is absolutely amazing. And all the girls on the team are fantastic. And they've been doing amazing. And I suppose the hardest thing is to match continuity, direct continuity oh, yeah. with coloration. Um, it's layered pieces of prosthetic with Bondo. Um, and then the coloration can take time as well. And obviously they have to match it to the scene before. Or like what, what Get it that? right, team. Yeah. You've got coronation straight there. Yeah. We've got um, yeah. a little clip here. This is sort of from tonight's episode. This okay. is a, a, the aftermath of how he's dealing with, with what's happened. Excellent. Are you going to be able to do something? Right, you're going to be able to fix it. We need to see how your face heals first. Ideally, we'd like to be able to avoid a skin graft. Ideally. But we would like to take you into surgery tonight for a skin graft on your arm. Oh, you've been through quite a trauma, Ryan. It's going to take you a while to come to terms with everything. But we'll be working together throughout your recovery. And if you feel you're ready to see your face, then... We'll get a nurse to come in and take off your dressings. No, I'll... I'll, I'll leave it for now. Oh, and this is going to be a long road to recovery, isn't it? I mean, the Coronation Street were really important for them to say, you know, this isn't just a story that's happened and throw away, move on to the next one. They're going to follow this. Yeah, that's one thing we wanted to include was some kind of longevity within the parameters of soap. Obviously, it moves very quickly. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to have some kind of longevity included in the aftermath. And uh, um, acid attack survivors go through hundreds of operations, multiple skin grafts, mm. and quite often a lifetime of post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma therapy and things like that. So we wanted to at least have some longevity in the aftermath that showed the different yeah. stages of his recovery. And didn't Princess Anne come on set as well? Yeah, she came to visit us the other day, which was amazing. She's a very busy woman. She was extremely... Um, well versed in all things Coronation Street, so I think, I think a few of us fan. at the studio are kind of hoping she's a bit of a fan. Do you think she <laughs> I reckon she is? I can't I say reckon. she is, but it'd be nice. But she, but also she's the patron of the Acid Survivors Trust, so yes. she. This is a subject very close to her heart. Yeah, definitely. Um, she's a patron of I think 100 charities as well. She yeah. Stops, um, but you know she was. It was really lovely to have her in the studio, and uh, well, we we're all very privileged. And uh, she. We had a lovely day. She kind of came into she the Rovers been. and we talked through the, yeah. the, the scene and stuff like that. Did you have the so. briefing beforehand where you have to know what yes. to say and what, what, you know, how it all works, the Ma protocol? Yes. Her Royal Highness first, yes, Mum to follow. Yeah. Mum that runs like, with Pam. Yeah. Oh, the head. Not Mum, don't say <laughs> Mum. Yeah. I think a lot of sweaty palms in the. In the yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, listen, congratulations on this storyline. It's, it's a amazing. really powerful one. Thanks Great so for you as an actor to be able to do something like this as well. Um, tomorrow night, 8 pm on ITV, is when the story continues. And thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Thank you.